I completely, I don't know, it passed my mind that Aaron Gruel, the teacher who the movie uh, Freedom Writers is inspired by, um, she's here today and she's one of our speakers. Good morning, everyone. So welcome back to my channel. Today is day two of Vlogmas and I'm actually in the parking lot of the conference center where the teacher convention is going to be. This convention is sponsored by the Education Fund. So I'll be going to about four sessions today. They will provide like a buffet style breakfast and a sit down lunch with a keynote speaker. It's usually our superintendent. So uh, I will take you along with me today and you will see how my day is today on December 2nd, 2017. So I look forward to sharing with you guys what my day will be like today. I am all registered. They gave me a badge and the badge shows the different sections that I will be going today. So I'm seeing that I basically got my first choices. So I am really, really excited. And this is the book that shows all the ideas that will also be presented in the conference. And the cool thing is they give us this little USB drive and it has all the information from the um, sessions along with other sessions that you may not have gone to. So this is pretty cool. Another thing is they gave us this whole little bag from TD Bank. They have a lot of sponsors and it's filled with many goodies and I'll show you guys later what's in here. So now it's time to go look at the vendors and see what else, um, what other items are available.
So I have to say something right now um, while we're in breakfast. I completely, I don't know, it passed my mind that Erin Gruel, the teacher who the movie Freedom Writers is inspired by, um, she's here today and she's one of our speakers and I got to talk to her and it's so exciting because I'm thinking about doing the I teach to teacher tag and uh, one of the questions is what is your inspirational educational movie and Freedom Writers was it. So I get to meet the real Erin Gruel. So I'm really, really excited. I'm so awestruck when I shook her hand and we were talking, I felt like crying. So I'm very excited and um, she's probably gonna be in my session too so I hope that that is true and then maybe I can vlog a little bit about her story see that she's the one that gave us the funding and made it possible for Erin to be here <laughs> but um so we will thank her in absentia and um, what we will do now is introduce the person you've all been waiting for so give me just a few minutes to tell you something about her so you're as excited as I am, although I'm sure all of you know a lot about her. Erin Gruel is a teacher and author and founder of the Freedom Writers Foundation. By fostering educational philosophy that values and promotes diversity, Erin transforms her students' lives. She encourages them to rethink rigid beliefs about themselves and others, reconsider daily decisions, and ultimately rechart their futures. Erin and her students captured their collective journey in the Freedom Writers Diary. Erin founded the Freedom Writers Foundation where she currently teaches educators around the world how to implement her innovative lesson plans into their own classrooms. She created the Freedom Writers Methodology a progressive teaching philosophy and curricula designed to achieve excellence from all students. Erin continues to fight for equality in education and inspires teachers and students all over the world with her work. Please welcome our 2017 Idea Expo keynote speaker, Erin Ruel. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, before I begin, I, I want to share a silly anecdote. A, a couple days ago, I was at a middle school. And as most of you know, out of the mouth of babes, middle school kids will say anything. And this disgruntled 11 year old looked me up and down and then said, Um, you look a lot older than that woman in the movie, which is how I began my day. So I'm here to tell you I am an ordinary person who had extraordinary experiences with 150 kids. And for those of you that have seen that movie, that aforementioned movie, it looks like I only had one classroom, <laughs> but I had 150 kids. And the journey still continues, and that journey is exquisite and difficult, and we have become a family. And we like to say that we put fun into dysfunctional family, but family we are. But before I begin, I, I want to take you into my classroom. For those of you that don't know our story, it was very daunting for this ordinary person who on most days still has chalk in my butt to take our story out of room 203, out of Long Beach, and put it on a screen or put it on a television set. So it was really important for us to make sure that it was gritty and honest and not only told our story as educators, but gave a voice to the voiceless, our students. Because if a rose is a rose is a rose in poetry, a kid is a kid is a kid. And for me, a kid is much more than that number or that statistics or data or that grade. They're the sum of their parts. Our story transcended our classroom in Long Beach, California, and the set of roots right here in Miami Dade. So much so that the teacher is that is a part of our family was the Miami Dade Teacher of the Year. And that is my beloved Precious. And some of her babies got in at like five according to be here. Can you stand up, Precious? Woo! <laughs> Amazing. She's larger than life. Uh, she is a rock star personified, and she is one of you. And what's amazing is so are her students, who are going on to win every award you can think of for using their voice. 
their words. So today is really about celebrating. Today is really about innovation. Today is really about voice and a home. For a kid who was 14 who was literally homeless, to walk into a crazy, messy classroom and to feel at home. And that is why each and every one of us are here today. Because we are that hope for our babies. We love on them. We feel for them. We spend every single penny of our paychecks on them. But now we know Ed Fun has a little shopping spree that you guys can do. That's kind of fun. Like, I actually want to swing by there on my way to the airport. And then home. The idea that each and every kid can walk into your room and things can be right. Things can be normal. Because each and every one of us have these, we don't have magic wands or we don't have pixie dust. <laughs> but with our subjects and our stories, we empower our kids to pay it forward, to go back and be that light for others, to pay it forward, to right wrongs. And all I kept thinking is hurry. Get, get yourself to Pennsylvania Avenue so that kids can turn on their TV and say, I, I look like you and I talk like you, and I come from where you come from, and I don't have to get on MTV or hit a ball over a fence or do something fancy. All I gotta do is find my voice. And if you come together with that voice, you can not only shatter glass, but we can shatter stereotypes. So we are here today to learn everything we can from all of these teachers who are creative and innovative and see things in their kids they may not even see in themselves. We're here to be sponges. We're here to take notes and to take risks and to learn and to listen. And come Monday, turnkey, put it to good use. When we run or we skip to our classroom to see those kids so that we can light that fire, turn that passion and purpose into something bigger because we have a lot of work to do. We got to get my girl Maria to Pennsylvania Avenue. We got to let people put down their fists, use their words to create a legacy, not a trail of destruction, and allow every single person to feel like they matter. And they matter in your classrooms. They matter to you. So today is about them. So today is about your babies. May you learn, may you soak up, may you take in, and may you pay it forward. So thank you.
the definition. So lift the flap. So it's an interactive for all. Thank you to my two volunteers that let me use their thing. I promise you'll get them. Hi, everyone. I know the noise in the room is really loud, but this is Mr. Sean tonight. He was one of my high school teachers in English. And this is so awesome. I get to bump into him when we come to these conferences. And she's so. going to get that dissertation done in at one least year. The next year. Yes. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Tonight. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm here with Aaron. Say hi, Aaron. Hi. hi. I'm with Ms. Sanchez, <laughs> teacher extraordinaire. And this is so awesome for me to meet her today. She's such an inspiration and I just wanted to add her in today's video clip. So have a good day. You know, we've, we've mastered all of this. Let's do something different. And so I decided to tell them to take out a sheet of paper, a pen, a marker, a crayon, it didn't matter. Take out something and tell me something about you that I don't know. And I saw when my kids looked at me like, I said, don't even worry about the board. I'm tweaking it today. <laughs> Wanted to do something different. So my babies pulled out their papers. They started writing. And I thought it was really odd because they were writing really fast, nonstop. Even when the, when the timer went off, they were still writing. I said, hello, that's time. That's time. Here I am in front of these kids as the best teacher ever. But I wasn't, because I didn't even know my kids. I had been busy teaching over them and never teaching to them. The next day in class, I said, everybody, get in the circle. Get in the circle. And they're like, you want us to mess up your classroom? <laughs> I said, I do. I need you. I need you to mess up my classroom. We're sitting in the circle. And I looked at every single one of my babies and I said, I see you for the very first time. Mm -hmm. Andrea was the only person that shared out that day because I couldn't go any further. But taking those papers home and reading them, one sheet of paper, one paragraph, literally just took my heart. It was at that moment I knew I needed to change. It was no longer about the grades for me. It was no longer about assessments. It was no longer about being the model teacher. I didn't care how my classroom looked. As long as I was reaching my kids, as long as I was focusing on what actually mattered. It was times after I started doing these different activities where I didn't know whether I was coming or going. So I decided to do a Google search. I need to search. There has to be somebody in the world that feels my pain. Where are all the teachers? What, I need somebody to understand my pain. I was taught, you don't get to know your kids. You don't get to know them because it's too much. Stay away, ask the right questions, but I had already opened it up. And once you open up a child's heart, you can't close it back. So it was out now. It was out. I'm on the internet and I'm just Googling up a storm. I'm like, what? I was like, they just need to be free. And this, it just has to be something. And all of a sudden, this book comes up. <laughs> I said, the Freedom Writer's Diary. Well, who is this? And what is it? <laughs> How could I not know about this? What is going on with the PD in Miami Dade County? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know about this book. Okay? So, of course, I ordered my copy. And thank goodness Amazon had it, all right, and told me it was at Barnes and Noble, not too far from where I live. So, I go pick it up after work. I read the book in one day. couldn't put it down and all of a sudden I don't know who these babies are in this book the only thing I see are my kids and my classroom so I have this book I have these notebook sheets of paper with all this stuff and then it filled as if my grandmother was like hey you gotta wake up you have not become the best teacher that you think you are ma'am wake up call I cannot begin to tell you how my world literally spiraled out. Most people don't know that my journey with the Florida, with the Freedom Riders Foundation started in middle school at Charles R. Drew Middle School. 
I had my first gala with middle school babies, okay? And I have to tell people that everywhere I go because people are convinced that it only started at New Orleans. And I have to tell you, no, it didn't. It's not true. It's not fair to my babies that was on this journey with me long ago. My babies are doing great things. Andrea, she's good. She's slain. She's getting ready to graduate from Duke. Wow. And Ray is doing amazing things. She calls me a hero. I said, no, ma'am, you are mistaken. You are the hero. Had it not been for you, I would have been that same type of educator. And I wouldn't have had the opportunity to come to Miami New Orleans Senior High School and meet this amazing student here, Kayla Williams. So help me along. Why? Why is it the devil likes to knock me down when I'm trying to get up? I'm not a dog, but my life seems to be a bit rough. I feel so that nothing is too tough for my God, so I need as much help as I can get. I always find myself in a battle between flesh and blood, battling lust and a lack of trust. These demons are determined to diminish every meaning of life there is to me, attacking me with anxiety on my quest to find clarity. See, I fell in love with this guy named Jesus, but... Every time we seem to get closer, things seem to get worse. I'm a target, walking down sidewalks as if I had bullseyes, eyes, the full size of demons that attach themselves to me, filling my mind up with lust and confusion as if I was a fusion between a gas pump and someone that craves love and affection. You see, the life I live in is like a trench, a sin that I consistently find myself sitting in, digging myself deeper and deeper until I find myself close to hell. I want to be the first ones to hear the trumpets ring. I don't want to have one foot in the door and another one out. I just want to be closer to him. I don't want you to think that this peace is just a peace, but this peace is a peace of me that will bring me peace and tranquility. I'm not just performing this in front of you, but I'm performing this in front of the king. I rebuke the devil himself in the name of Jesus. Because the devil will always try to tempt, kill, and end you. But you got to remember God. He's the one that created you. These battles are not yours to fight on your own. His blood is the one that will wash you away as snow. He knows the trials and tribulations that force you live off the world and not in it. So he knows my battles and of course he knows yours. So, I don't know about you, but I need oh, oh. Just a little more Jesus to help me along the way. and religion okay um, so yes I will take questions comments and concerns Anything hi everyone if you're with Precious and Minette she was one of our teacher of the years for the whole district and she just had an amazing session and I feel so inspired and motivated to just keep writing with my kids even though I'm an elementary teacher but oh my god thank you thank you so much you are welcome <laughs> thank you guys don't be afraid to write yourselves into existence love you oh that's beautiful It's lunch time. And yes, I put my croutons on the side. I don't want those points in my meals for today. Yum. And here's the main entree. Chicken and veggies. Yummy. Probably one of the most significant events that the F Fund puts together to benefit the most fantastic, inspired, and inspirational freedom fighters of our generation, Miami-Dade County Public Schools teachers. Thank you for all that you do.
the nod of your head, or in the repetition of soup cans, the rose of an orchard, the artistry of petals. Pattern can be pleasure. In language, rhythm and repetition are often used as the building blocks for poetry. There's the rhythm of language, created by syllables and their emphasis, such as, so long as men can breathe or eyes can see. And there's the repetition of language at multiple. So I kind of stopped it there. But I, I use that to introduce the whole idea of poetry to the students because, again, to be realistic, they do not like poetry, right? They do not because they think it's very complex. That conversation. Yeah, they think it's so complex and they don't get it and it's so hard to, you know, kind of understand. <coughs> so this video shows how the poetry is a natural thing, how, how you breathe is, is, is rhythmic and that poetry is also rhythmic. So I wanted to share with you what was in our TD Bank um, goodie bag. We were given these bags from Scholastic. Um, I actually ended up getting two of them. And I'll probably just give them away as gifts. And um, this is the Learning A through Z was one of the sponsors. So they gave us some information there. We got some office supplies. So I got staples, which are always good to have. There's this photo frame with different slots as well. Here's the catalog for the conference. We got these felt patterns for that you can use for projects. We get these door holders that look like flip-flops. says, keep your feet out of my room. And this one says, stop, do not enter. So these probably could be gifts for the students. And we got some rulers. A snack bar and some hooks to put on the bulletin board these are not magnetic these actually have like little spikes on the back so that's what was in our bag oh wait and color pencils oh I'm keeping these from frost science nice you know I love to I love to draw I'm an artist so yay little color pencil things the little things is what makes me happy so that's what was in our goodie bag and I got two of Erin Gruel's books. I got The Freedom Writer's Diary and Teach With Your Heart. I also got Erin to autograph my books. In The Freedom Writer's Diary, she wrote, Dear Marielle, Here's to Hope. And in Teach With Your Heart, Erin wrote, Dear Marielle, Follow Your Heart. So yeah, I got two books from Erin and I got them autographed by her. So it was a really great day. So this marks the end of today's vlog video. It is the end of the conference. I just finished session D, which is the last session. I learned a lot of important information today, a lot of information. So much information I can't apply everything all at once, but if I can at least integrate one idea or strategy that I learned today, then I think this was a success. Plus, hello, the highlight of my day was meeting Erin Gruel and hearing her story about her own experience with her students and the Freedom Writers and how she started that organization. And also listening to Precious Simone, which was last year's Miami-Dade County Public Schools Teacher of the Year for the whole entire County and listening to her student Kayla Williams which you saw a clip of in the video and I got to talk to Kayla and she had some beautiful words to share with me basically she said comparison is not a good thing comparison is the killer of joy and we have to remember that we are perfectly imperfect and to accept each other for who we are we are all beautifully unique and amazing and that's my takeaway from this and you know she's just a high school student but um, this is a moment where the student becomes the teacher and I pointed at her and I said Kayla you inspire me and she's so amazing and this has been a really rewarding experience so I hope you enjoyed it and I know this vlogmas video too is mostly the Ed Fun Ideas with Impact conference but it was uh, a great experience and I hope you enjoyed it too let me know if there's any ideas that I presented in the video that you liked in the comments down below and I will be sure to see you tomorrow. So make sure you hit the like button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a future video. Remember that every time you hit the like button, it just makes this video more available to other teachers who may also find it useful. I'll see you again tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 3 and I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful, great day.